Good morning. All right. This is like, uh, you can use your analogy, church or a classroom, both equally apt, you know, that everyone sits towards the back. So there's lots of room up front. Good morning. My name is Eduardo Peñalvera. I'm the president of Seattle University, and it's my privilege to welcome you all to our campus for this groundbreaking gathering, bringing together leaders from politics, business, civil society, higher education, to share common insights, explore opportunities, and we hope uh, build bridges between India and the greater Seattle community. The name of this conference, Seattle Setu, reflects uh, that ambitious goal. Setu means bridge in several Indian languages. And, and that ambition of building bridges leads to, a, I think, a series of important questions as we begin our time uh, this morning. Why India? Why Seattle? And then finally, why Seattle University? And each of these requires just a, a little discussion, although I hope the why India has obvious answers to the people in this room. Uh, India is the world's largest democracy. It's a religiously and ethnically diverse country, and one with which we share many common legal, linguistic, and constitutional traditions. It's also one with which we share some common challenges, issues ranging from affirmative action to religious freedom to democratic integrity. There's a great deal that we can learn uh, from engaging with one another. Why Seattle is an equally important uh, question to address. In fact, it might be more important uh, because I think for some people here in Seattle, the question of why India is not self-evident. During my own lifetime, Seattle's come to understand itself more and more as a world city, standing on equal footing with the other great global cities of the United States. And an important part of that emerging self-understanding has come from our magnificent port and the global trade that passes through it every day. And viewed through the lens of trade, a cornerstone of our global identity has been our location on the Pacific Rim. And so our focus has understandably been on building connections between Seattle and East Asia, and in recent years, Southeast Asia. But alongside our important identity as a port city has been our equally and long-standing identity as a hub of technological innovation. And I would argue that as a city, Seattle has done more than any other city over the past 100 years to compress time and space, to literally change the meaning of distance, and in the process to create the globalized world in which we now live. And no single innovation has done more to shrink time and space than the rise of commercial jet travel that Boeing ushered in during the second half of the 20th century. And the tech industry, which now represents about a third of the Seattle economy, has only accelerated that spatial and temporal compression. Unsurprisingly, India and Indians have been important on both of these fronts from the very beginning. Air India's recent historic purchase of 290 Boeing jets is just the most recent episode in a 90-year relationship. And I have no doubt that a large percentage of the Indian Americans who emigrated to the United States since the end of national quotas in the mid-1960s arrived in a Boeing 747. Many of those Indians found their way to Seattle even before the era of Microsoft and Amazon. And these early members of the Indian community concentrated in South King County and laid the cultural foundations for today's rapidly growing Indian American community here in the Puget Sound, which now rates among the five largest in the United States. And fueled by familial ties and by the tech and life sciences industries, that community continues to grow. Collectively, it represents a human bridge between Seattle and India. And finally, why Seattle University? As the university that shares this great city's name, we see ourselves as uniquely Seattle's university, and we embrace the label that I've heard many use to describe us as Seattle's living room, a place where the city can come together to learn about and discuss, at times debate, the most important issues of the day. As a Jesuit university, we have an inherently global perspective, and some of our earliest Jesuits, including St. Francis Xavier, were drawn to India five centuries ago, where they founded the first Jesuit educational institutions in the world. The Jesuits continue to sponsor a global network of hundreds of colleges and universities on every continent, including dozens of institutions in India. For many years running, India has been sending increasing numbers of students to, tr to study in the United States as undergraduates, but also in graduate and professional education. And here at Seattle University, our largest and fastest growing contingent of international students comes from India. 
Seattle University has for many years enjoyed a strong partnership with St. Joseph's, the Jesuit University in Bangalore, and together with a delegation of Seattle University leaders, I traveled to India last year as we developed partnerships with many more schools, including Jindal Global University in Sonipat. Building on these foundations and with a generous gift from the Round Glass Foundation, later today we'll be formally launching the Round Glass India Center at Seattle University, something you'll hear about uh, at greater length over dinner. We're excited to reaffirm and deepen our commitment to engaging with India by hosting this gathering today. Before I welcome our mayor, Bruce Harrell, I, I would like to thank a few people who helped make today's events possible. First, uh, our speakers. We're particularly grateful to those who traveled long distances to be here today, including several who came from India and from Washington, DC. We first envisioned this event in conversation with Greater Seattle Partners, and we're especially grateful to them, to uh, Brian Surratt and Josh Davis uh, for their sponsorship and partnership in today's event. For their financial and other support, we're grateful to the Round Glass Foundation, k l Gates, the Seattle Times, the Seattle Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, Indian American Community Services, the South Asian Bar Association, Pallavi and Ashish Wahi, and Mala and Suri Raman. I'd also like to thank Amit Shukla, the Dean of our College of Science and Engineering, and Professor Minakshi Rishi, the Albers School of Business and Economics, the other members of the conference steering committee who worked hard over the past eight months uh, to plan the programming for today's event. And of course, events like this don't just happen because someone has a great idea. Uh, they require countless hours of hard work on logistics and execution. So thank you to Julie Brady, Robin Meeks, Tara Lee, Emily Feicht, Kathleen Lacoze, uh, Jocelyn Boudreau, and many other staff members in university events and marketing and communications who've been instrumental in making this event happen. And it's now my great pleasure to turn the podium over to Seattle's mayor, Bruce Harrell. Mayor Har Harrell became Seattle's mayor in 2021, uh, the latest high point in a distinguished career spanning decades in public service and the private sector. Although he obtained his higher education at a university up the road, uh, <laughs> we at Seattle University count him as one of our own. Uh, specifically, we claim some credit for his marriage uh, since he met his equally accomplished wife, Joanne, at a party here on our campus. So please, please join me in welcoming Seattle's Mayor, Bruce Harrell. Thank you, President Alfer. He earlier said in the ready room that you are not here to hear welcome remarks because you're here to see the panel. I disagree. That was a warm introduction and a warm welcoming remarks. Thank you very much for being here. I also don't want you to be distracted by this beautiful Indian pocket square that Professor Kalantri gave me, but it does look pretty cool, right? <laughs> all right. So on behalf of the city, first of all, thank you for being here to prepare and engage in uh, really meaningful discussions on business and our city and our trade and, and doing a deep dive with thought leaders and what we're trying to do. The numbers sort of speak for themselves when you look at the uh, bilateral trade and goods and services re re reaching a record of 170, 70, 157 billion in 2021. When you look at the Indian investments, um, supporting over close to 100,000 jobs, I think over 70,000 American jobs. You look at the hundreds of thousands of Indian students um, that contribute um, uh, in so many ways to our society. You look at the recent visit here of the Prime Minister. There's this is sort of the, becoming a, the go-to place for this kind of work. And so as the mayor of this great city, I'm very proud to stand with you in collaboration and in support. Uh, we are known as a city of innovation. We are known as a, uh, what I say is a special sort of cool vibe, a special sort of funk where we are a welcoming city. We pride ourselves in being open-minded about certain things. Sometimes our liberalism can get in our way, uh, but be that as it may, um, we welcome this kind of um, discussion so we could be better. Um, you know, Seattle is one of the fastest growing cities, if not the fastest growing city in the United States with a strong and diverse economy. We're not a one industry town, as you well know. Our economic strength is the direct result of uh, growing and in innovative key industries leaders uh, in aerospace and maritime and manufacturing, life science, healthcare, we're leaders in climate change, technology. These all help and deep, deepen our global connect connectivity. This is very intentional 
and if anyone's going to be worth their weight in salt as an elected leader, you need to sort of dive in. I was a technology lawyer before I became an, a, a politician, and I sort of wanted to be where the action was. And at this point, I'm, uh, I'm going to age myself a little bit, but I know, uh, where's Raj? I'm younger than you, so I feel better about it. No. Uh, I'm going to age myself, but I remember when, uh, when the internet was sort of being developed and when we were looking at wireless communications, and as a young lawyer, I wanted to be where the action was. We are now where the action is in terms of what we're trying to do. Now, you know the, the companies here, and you'll hear from philanthropists and civic leaders. You know the companies here that we sort of double down on that are such good, strong partners. But I'll close by saying this. I wish all of you prosperity. I wish all of you success. But I always ask the why, uh, the, the, the why. Um, remember the why. And for me, you know, my uh, one set of grandparents came all the way from the hills of uh, Kumamoto, Japan, and another set of grandparents came from the racist Jim Crow South at the time to come here to Seattle. My mom and dad went to high school here uh, for a very simple journey. That is for jobs and education, a place to raise a family, a place to be safe. My, as your mayor, my primary responsibility is to make sure you are safe. I take that very seriously. And when I see people that are sick on these streets, I see people that, are, uh, that need help. And I see people that actually need to be arrested. As your leader, I have to be bold and unambiguous in this responsibility to keep you safe. But the why, why I want you continued success and continued prosperity is such that you can help us in this country Help us get past uh, what I, I would say, a, cu a country that's been obsessed with race, a country that's been obsessed with st stepping over others for advancement. Um, as, as a member of the API community, we were once perceived as the model American, right, the model minority. Um, just believe in hard work and believe in strong education and everything will come together. I, I take it a step further now. And I ask that you two join in my journey to care about people who are sick care about people who are unhealthy, care about people who, for whatever reason or another, have lost their way. When they're in the third grade or fourth grade, these kids are like this. You know, I have two grandchildren. They're like, they could do everything. Uh, many people have just lost their way. So as you continue your journey into prosperity and empowerment, I think you'll hear during the panel from phil ph philanthropists and civic leaders who r remembers the why. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir because all of you give. You're givers. But I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that we're in this journey together. And that's why I'm so proud to be here. That's why I said I have to be here with you this morning. The why is that we're in this fight together, this human fight together. I know many of you have overcome impediments to get to this room today in your personal life and your professional journey. Nothing comes easy. There's no substitution for hard work. So thank you for being here. Thank you for joining this collaborative spirit here in Seattle. And I close with saying this is the go-to place and we are here today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Harrell. We really appreciate um, your remarks and your time that you spent in coming here and um, really inaugurating the, um, this conference and our new center. It's my pleasure to serve as your MC for the rest of the day. My name is Sheetal Kalantri. I'm a professor of law as well as an associate dean of international programs at the university here, um, in particular the law school. Um, I will be uh, heading up our new wonderful Round Glass India Center and um, that we're launching today. And I can think of no one better here um, to talk about this new center then the next speaker that I'm introducing. Um, the Round Glass Center's focus has been on Punjab, in particular, the region. And our next speaker is Senator Manka Dingra, who was the first Sikh to have been elected to any legislature in the United States. She represents the 45th Legislative District and is the Deputy Majority Leader of the Washington State Senate. Prior to that, she worked as a prosecutor and advocate on behalf of women's rights, which is right along the work that I do. I do work on human rights, so I'm very, very excited to welcome her and hear from her. Senator. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
it is such a pleasure for me to be here uh, with all of you here today, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I am very proud to serve the 45th Legislative District, which includes the King County parts of Woodenville, parts of Redmond, Kirkland, Sammamish, and Duval, which is home to so many companies that you've heard about uh, today and yesterday, and to so many of the people who work in those companies, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, SpaceX, and the list continues. The 45th is also home to a significant, vibrant portion of the Indian American population in Washington. And there are thousands of us that live across the state and enrich every facet of our society, from the classroom to the boardroom. Indian Americans fill countless roles in both private and public life in our state. There are small business owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs of large companies, including the founding officers of many of our tech companies, and yes, some of them are also state senators. This conference highlights the significant everyday role that Indians and Indian Americans play in the economic, cultural, and civic life of our nation. It also highlights how much we can accomplish together when we build bridges that connect us rather than allow differences to divide us. In a joint statement this summer, the White House and the Indian Administration shared that the U.S.-India trade and investment partnerships is an engine for global growth, with bilateral trade exceeding $191 billion in 2022, nearly doubling from 2014. That is impressive. It commended our partnership in technology, a clean energy future, and empowering future generations. The latter is what we must continue to work towards. The foundation we build and strengthen now is imperative for generations to come. Borders, barriers, and cultural differences do not change the fact that there's always more that we can accomplish together when we work together. The symbiotic relationship between our nations empowers Indian Americans, both young and old. Indian students are on pace to soon become the largest foreign student community in the United States, with an increase of nearly 20% in Indian students studying in the United States last year alone. Furthermore, this year, the US Department of State will launch a pilot adjudicate domestic renewals of certain petition-based temporary work visas, no longer requiring residents to leave the country for renewal. This allows our Indian American community members to not only continue to be connected to their communities established here, but also allows the sector to consider competitive candidates, especially in high demand vocations in India. The movement of professional and skilled workers, students, investors, and business travelers between our nations contribute immensely to enhancing our evolving economic and technolo uh, technological partnerships. Truly, there's so much to be gained from working together. Our collaboration propels not only both nations, but has worldwide benefits across many sectors. We all know that the diversity of our state and nation is our greatest asset. Unfortunately, fear of the other has long persisted here. My first run for public office coincided with a nationwide rise of anti-immigrant rhetoric. This kind of rhetoric limits opportunity. It marginalizes and disempowers a community's voice. With such a significant critical partnership we must continue focusing on how we can empower our community and stand together against rhetoric and violence. I thank the organizer, organize, organizers for Seattle Setu's conference this year and for the ongoing work to ensure that our community has the support that it needs. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting each other, and together we can and will make a difference. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, um, Senator, and we appreciate your remarks. Uh, our final welcome speaker uh, is Sunny Singh, 
who is uh, the founder of the Round Glass Foundation. Uh, we're so grateful for his support um, with, for Seattle University and for envisioning uh, the idea for this uh, center where we, uh, which we're starting at uh, the university. But he's also an early pioneer. In 1996, he founded Edifix, which is a profitable multinational company and market leader. Since then, he's moved to social entrepreneurship where, as I mentioned, founding the Round Glass Foundation, which works to improve the lives of people in India, particularly Punjab, through on-the-ground initiatives, sports and learning for children, women's empowerment, waste management, and so much more, which has impacted already 1.6 million people in 1,700 villages. We'll hear more from Sunny in the dinner program, which I hope you will join and have a fireside chat with him about philanthropy in the Indian American community. Um, but in the meanwhile, I would like to invite Sunny to say a few words of welcome. So firstly, um, let me talk about the force behind the India Center. Um, many, many months ago, um, <clears throat> we were um, having some discussions with Seetal and Eduardo, Seetal in particular, and uh, she had this uh, nascent idea of an India center uh, with a big dream. And the more I talked to her, the more I talked to her team, I realized that she is all in. And so if anybody has to be thanked for all of us being here today, it is Seetal and her team. So thank you. <clears throat> basically, basically, I had no choice. Um, secondly, about the India Center. Now, the India Center, the way we look at it, the way I look at it, and I think all of us look at it, is a platform. It's a platform for enabling collaboration. We are focusing on law, business, and philanthropy. It's a collaboration of ideas. It's a collaboration of initiatives. It's a collaboration of implementation of those initiatives between the India diaspora and people in the state of Washington who are interested in India and India itself. But not only that, it is also an opportunity for us, the India diaspora, to get more involved in the state of Washington in its needs and whatever issues it might have. And that is the India Center. Not only that, I also believe that the India Center can be, just like collaboration between the state of Washington and India, it can be a trailblazer, it can be a model for how other states in the United States can collaborate and work with India and vice versa. So we can lay that kind of groundwork and create the platform that can be then open source to other states and universities in other states can take, um, uh, take the lead on that. But also, it's important to understand that we will also not just work alone as an India Center in the state of Washington. The India Center will work with all the other associations that exist in the United States, in DC, in Washington, other foundations, et cetera so that we can all collaborate together versus everybody working in their own silo, perhaps overlapping, and already realizing the sum of the total of all the parts. And that's what we would be able to do, is collaborate with them and bring them together for a common cause of be better collaboration between the state of Washington, United States, and India. Now lastly, I'll, 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 I'll leave you with this. Um, now, if your pie is this big or this big or this big, no matter how big your pie is, if you own 90% of the pie, you will say you're doing pretty well. I would think so. You give 90% of the pie to anybody, they'll be feel, you, if you're a company, you have 90% of the market share, you'll, pretty, you'll feel pretty good. So my take is that the 10% left in that 100% is not a big deal. So why can't all of us give 10%, starting with our time, to something that we passionately believe in? The 10% can be a business idea, can be something you contribute, and then you give 10% of your resources, your financial resources. And you can use the India Center as a platform. If, you, know, you, you can do it alone. You can do it with a bunch of friends. I think the more you collaborate, the better. But you can also leverage the India Center as a platform for giving 10% of your time, 10% of your financial resources, 10% of you in the enablement of something that is so beautiful, doing things for the state of Washington, getting the India diaspora involved, getting the Indians involved, and between Washington and the country of India. And so this is what I tell, I tell high schoolers, I tell their parents, it doesn't matter what age you are, how much financial resources you are, you can always, always give 10% of yourself. 
And again, Seattle, thank you. Thank you from my heart.